Today I'm going to show you how to work out the area of squares, rectangles, triangles and circles as well as what we call composite shapes. So in terms of areas of rectangles you've just got to multiply both of your dimensions together. That's all you really need to remember. You might see them as uh, written formulas as A equals length times width or A equals LW. Uh, it could be that you've got a height and a width, a height and a length, doesn't really matter. Just multiply your two dimensions together and you'll get the area. So here we've got four times eight and that's all you need to do for the area of a square or a rectangle and that would give us an answer of 32. So here we've got um, square meters. Essentially we've got four rows of eight square meters. So meter squares. So if we counted all these up uh, we'd have 32. So we're just saying we've got four lots of eight. Now because this is in meters it would be measured in meters squared. So we've got a little two that you need to remember to place with your unit of measure. That just means squared and that is applicable to areas. If it was a, a 3D shape and we're looking at volume, then it would be a three. So we'll cover that in another video, but this is a 2D shape, so it's a two. Following on from there, we've got triangles. Now with triangles, I always just recommend you do it exactly the same as you would do a rectangle, but then just half your answer. So in terms of the uh, formula for this you might see it as base times height divided by two or half the base times the height but essentially it's just do it the same as you would a rectangle and then halve your answer so you've got your two dimensions you've got height and base just multiply those and then halve your answer so here we've got five times nine is uh, 45 five times nine is 45 of that and that will give us an answer of 22.5 so with triangles, if you think of um, a rectangle, um, you'd just do your sort of five times nine, multiply those two dimensions, but then for a triangle, just halve your answer. You can see you've got the area for that triangular piece there once you've halved it. So then we've got what we call composite shapes. So we'll move on to circles later, but composite shapes, you'll generally find uh, these are where you've got some pretty dodgy little shapes like this so uh, you might be a mixture of rectangles and triangles rectangles and semicircles who knows but uh, essentially what you've got to do is just work uh, split it into different shapes that you can easily work out so for example with this one i chop it along that way we should be able to work out these three separate areas for these three different rectangles so we'll start off with area one so three times four so 3 times 4 is 12. Area 2, 5 times 10. So 5 times 10 is 50. Now the reason why I've split it up that way is because we can see with these rectangles we've already got the dimensions ready. Uh, so nice and easy. So it made sense to split it up that way. Now with area 3 here, we can see that it's 6, but we don't know how much that particular height or length of this uh, rectangle is. We know that the full length there would be 10. So we've got actually got to work out what that one is. So if we say, well, to there is four, because it's just the same as the other side, then what's left must be six. So the area for that rectangle is six times six. And you'll often find with these composite uh, shape questions, you'll have to um, work out one of the dimensions, at least one of them. So now we've got the three dimensions for each, uh, three areas for each uh, rectangle there. Just add them together. So that would give us eight and nine. So 98. 98 centimeters squared this time because we measured in centimeters. So if we look at how we can apply those methods to uh, this composite shape here, this has come from a, an NCFE exam. It uh, incorporates a little bit of uh, calculating money in, involved with the area. So it says the diagram shows the plan of a field. The farmer sells the field for three pound for every square meter. Work out the total amount of money the farmer should get. So here we can see we've got a rectangle and a triangle. Okay. Um, now looking at the triangle, we've not got any dimensions. So we're going to have to work out two of the dimensions. But we can see we've got two dimensions for the rectangle there. So we can just multiply those two together. So 75 times 100 equals 7,500 for the rectangle. Now in terms of the triangle there, 
we need to decide or we need to work out how long these dimensions are going to be. So if we look at the height, well, the opposite side is 100. So we know up to there is 30. So what we've got left down at the bottom part of that must be 70. We can do the same along the bottom there. So we've got 160 all the way along the bottom. Up until that point is 75. So if we take 75 off of the 160, uh, that will leave us with 85. Okay, I'm going to need to calculate for the next bit. So we've got 70 times 85. So just do it the same as you would a rectangle. And then divide your answer by 2. So what we need to do now is just add those together. And that's just so that we can see how much it's going to cost. The person who's going to be buying this field, how much are we going to be selling it for? So we add those together. We've got 10,475 uh, meters squared. In total, it's going to be three pounds for every squared meter. So we're just going to times that by three, it gives us a total of thirty-one thousand four hundred and twenty-five pounds. Okay, so the next bit we've got then is everybody's favourite, which is area of circles. So area of the circle is uh, pi r squared. So it's a little formula that we've got there for the area of the circle now. Um, with formulas, whenever you've got some components together, there's an invisible time sign in the middle. So we've got two components there. We've got pi and we've got r squared. So most of the time, the value of pi is simplified to 3.14. Sometimes it's 3.142, but more often than not, it's 3.14. So I'm just going to use 3.14 for this particular question. So then we've got r squared. So R stands for radius. So the radius is from the central point of a circle to the edge. So it's a bit like a hand to a clock. Sometimes they'll give you a diameter, which is the full width of a, a, a circle, like so. So here the diameter would be six. So half of that is your radius, which would be three. So if you're ever given a diameter, just halve it for your R squared. Um, so if something is squared, we're multiplying it by itself. So essentially the R squared there, we've got 3 times 3. So we're times it by itself. So the radius times the radius gives us the value of R squared. So sometimes you can work that out separately and just replace it into your calculation. So if we've got 3.14 times 9 would be the... Um, substitute if you like but technically you could just pop it all in the calculator all in one go and it will give you the right answer so 3.14 times 3 times 3 will give us 28.26 so some practice questions here that we can see we've got uh, question 1 6.2 centimeters for a radius so we know that's 3.14 times 6.2 times 6.2 and that will give us our answer there so 3.14 times 6.2 times 6.2 for the r squared gives us 120 we'll just round it to one decimal 120.7 centimeters squared always remember your units of measure so that's that one uh question two is giving us a diameter this time so we need to halve that so 11 divided by 2 is 5.5 .5. so here then we've got 3.14 times 5.5 .5 times 5.5 .5. so that will give us 94 we'll just do it for two decimal places 0.99 and that is it so hopefully you found these to be quite useful and you can apply these methods to any practice questions you've got uh, if you found it useful, do check out the video that's on screen now, which is for volume. I'll see you over there.